Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning has been on infant mortality and healthy pregnancies. Research points to significant value to infants, mothers, families, and the environment from breastfeeding. Breastfeeding has been shown to be protective against many illnesses and conditions. My next guest is Dalvery Blackwell, who is a co-founder and executive director of the African American Breastfeeding Network, Inc. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and I appreciate you being here. So Thank right you. off the bat, you have to tell us more about the African American Breastfeeding Network and what it is you guys do. Okay, so in 2011, uh, at that time, my United States Surgeon General, uh, Dr. Benjamin Frank, um, I'm sorry, Regina Benjamin, mm -hmm. she cre she put out this breastfeeding report, and in it she stated very cl clearly for mothers the most important preventative, effective measures that they can take to protect themselves and their babies is to breastfeed, mm. and we know that naturally after a beautiful birth, the next um, thing that mothers do is skin to skin and breastfeed. The African American Breastfeeding Network was founded in 10 years ago in 2008 mm -hmm. to bridge gaps, to address disparities and inequalities, and to support families and mothers um, who are interested in breastfeeding and to normalize breastfeeding. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but education about breastfeeding is not always readily available to new mothers. So that's why it's important for, to have you here and for us to have this conversation. So there are benefits, like you said, to mothers and their babies when it comes to breastfeeding. So let's talk about some of those benefits. There's definitely protective factors from mothers that mothers uh, should be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there's lots of research that point to the fact that when a mother breastfeed, especially exclusively on uh, several children over time, she's less likely to have ovarian cancer, breast cancer, um, also mothers lose their uh, pre-pregnancy weight, they're uh, more likely to just get back into the swing of things. Yeah. And so for babies, the protective factors, as we, we know very well of, is reducing allergies, babies are less likely to have asthma, mm -hmm. uh, diabetes for both mothers and babies as well really, really important things. And so for the mother, like you said, reduced rates of breast cancer, uterine, cervical, and ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the baby's immune system develops more rapidly when uh, than a baby who is on formula. Absolutely. Okay. So the oxy uh, oxytocin uh, hormone is released when the mother breastfeeds and goes into her breast, uh, her bloodstream, which then goes to the baby. So that is definitely uh, an added protective factor for the baby, which is immune boosting. So when they do get sick, babies are less likely to be severely sick when they get a respiratory infection, mm -hmm. for example, and they're more likely to get better quicker uh, when they get colds and other ear infections because of so, breastfeeding. When a mother has a baby, uh, does she is she the one who's left up to whether she wants to use formula or breastfeed or is there a doctor that suggests maybe you should breastfeed versus not? How does that work? So we hope that uh, all families, that's how we address this issue through the lens of families because mm -hmm. mothers need families. So we would hope that it's a family decision and that it's assumed that all mothers, and particularly black mothers because of infant mortality and other health issues and the health status of our babies, that they are going to breastfeed. There are very few occasions where mothers cannot breastfeed. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say that 90% of all medications, even anxiety medication or Depression, depression medications are safe for babies. Mm. Um, our mothers should not breastfeed if they're HIV positive. Um, in terms of marijuana, we know that marijuana is very prevalent in our community. Uh, we definitely do not recommend uh, mothers um, use any tobacco or marijuana during pregnancy as well as breastfeeding. What about alcohol? So, <laughs> alcohol, a little bit is safe. Um, the limit is two glasses of wine. Uh, we don't recommend beer, but two glasses of wine mm -hmm. is fine. All very important stuff, and that's why your organization is important because if someone has questions mm -hmm. or would like to really sit down and be informed completely, they can just give you a call and you're there to answer their questions. Not only do we take calls, we have educational uh, sessions in the community called mm -hmm. Community Breastfeeding Gatherings. And Community Breastfeeding Gatherings are truly the hallmark of what AABN has been doing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We take a family environment, community approach to breastfeeding. So in the country, most 
breastfeeding organizations like mine and other organizations is peer-to-peer -peer support. Mm -hmm. But the way that we approach breastfeeding is that it's a community uh, involvement and family involvement. So what you might see at the community breastfeeding gatherings are uh, grandparents, fathers, best friends, and definitely children. We offer the community breastfeeding gatherings on a monthly basis, twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, we also do home visitation as well as hospital visitation. We have uh, two breastfeeding peer counselors. I'm a lactation international uh, board certified lactation um, consultant, and we have a father peer advocate as well. So we provide an array of support for mothers who are breastfeeding, and we focus on prenatal support so that mothers uh, have breastfeeding confidence prior to going into the hospital. That's really critical that before they even enter the hospital they know that AABN will be there but also that there's a lactation consultant that they could ask for that the nurses are well informed they know the importance of skin to skin and as they transition to a beautiful uh, community uh, with Milwaukee Health Services and AABN that they know that they're going to be taken care of. Absolutely so you co-founded the African American Breastfeeding Network with Angie Wilkes-Tate mm -hmm. uh, so when exactly did you guys come together and decide this is something that needs to be done? Well I I always knew I was going to breastfeed because that's what breasts are for. <laughs> I knew that we, I, we, I lactate as a woman. So I always knew, although I didn't see it a lot in my family. Mm -hmm. My mother didn't breastfeed. One cousin breastfed that I ever saw. But I always knew that I was going to breastfeed. So when I became pregnant, being naive, I, I assume, unfortunately, that women breastfed. I assumed that I would see literature in the office, uh, doctor's office, mm -hmm. that I would see posters in the doctor's office, and unfortunately, that wasn't my experience. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I decided that it was something that I definitely wanted to do, especially after breastfeeding, because it's so empowering. It's the one thing that mothers can do that they can give their baby life, but they can also give their baby nutrition. Mm -hmm. And breast milk is all that a baby needs. They, they necessarily don't need formula at all. So it's so empowering. I felt empowered. I, I felt like all mothers need to have this information, and black women are not getting the information. So a group of us met at Angie Wilkes Tate Home, who is the other co-founder, and we founded the African American Breastfeeding Network and designed our mission statement to move forward. And here we are, almost yes. 11 years yes. later, talking about it. So uh, talk about the difference between uh, breastfeeding compared to formula feeding. But I do really want to add that there is a cost difference because when you're breastfeeding, I'm thinking that's free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some formula and feeding supplies can cost well over $1,500 a year, right? Uh, you mean formula products? Yeah. Yeah, the cost of formula for an average family is uh, $1,500 a year or more mm -hmm. uh, to purchase formula. We know that formula is very expensive because in the black community it's locked up. and. Uh, sometimes women, families can't afford the amount that women or uh, babies need, and mm -hmm. so they have to put it behind and lock it up. Um, there's truly no difference. Between, there's no um, breast milk should not be compared to formula. So you're saying there's no comparison? There's no comparison. Okay. It's like, uh, you know, I love collard greens, <laughs> but collard greens in a garden, it cannot <laughs> compare to collard greens in a bag or in a can. <laughs> Let's just break it down and be real. Okay. So breast milk is 100% natural. Mm -hmm. It comes from the mother. It's the right temperature. When we speak of breastfeeding, we also have to uh, speak in terms of breast milk because it can be expressed. Mm -hmm. So the difference is that it's all natural. It's perfectly made for um, a baby at any gestational age. For example, we talk about prematurity and infant mortality. The breast milk of a baby that's born early is perfect because premature breast milk has higher protein that a pre, um, premature baby needs for mm -hmm. proper growth and development. So when a mother delivers her baby early, the most important thing is to breastfeed mm -hmm. because the breast milk is designed specifically for that baby born at any gestational age. And that is why now in the hospitals, doctors are not asking mothers to breastfeed. They're saying, we need your breast milk for this premature baby. Wow, and that's a very, uh important point you bring up because a mother's first milk is actually referred to as liquid gold. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Texas tea. So <laughs> uh, it's just the right amount of fat, sugar, water, and protein to help a baby continue to grow. And you've already mentioned that uh, women are also, uh, you know, losing that baby weight a little faster when they're breastfeeding. So I know that's a big incentive for a lot of women, uh, needless is. to say. But uh, although breastfeeding is very natural, as you said, there is an art to it. So a mother might have to continue until she kind of gets it right and the baby will automatically pick up on it all as well, right? I'm glad that you mentioned that because it is, I'm a lactation expert 
advocate. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Breastfeeding is natural to me, but there is an art. Patient and confidence is the two most important thing that I think black women need. Um, breastfeeding can be established which, within seven days if a mother breastfeeds exclusively. And that's why home visitation, in my opinion, is the most important thing we can do to support women who are breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Going into the homes, looking at the environment, looking, doing breast observation, um, oral observation for the baby, and making sure the baby is latched on correctly. When we do, the number one issues that AAB hen ha or mothers have is, is my baby getting my breast milk? I don't, so in the hospital they're, they're okay, but when they transition back home it's like they lose confidence and they're not sure. So we go into the home to make sure that the baby is latched on correctly and that milk is being transferred. So I think to, to answer your question with patients and support, especially from the community and families, breastfeeding can get off to a beautiful start within seven days and by four weeks they have mastered breastfeeding. Okay, so that's great information. And real quick, I just want to mention, because we're quickly running out of time, uh, some of your uh, programs and services uh, include educational sessions, which are held monthly, as you talked about. There's father support, support breastfeeding, chat room, and Healing Waters, which is your monthly bereavement sessions, which is led by a trained facilitator and volunteer supporter. So all great stuff that you're offering to the community. And uh, if you would, give us your website address and phone number to call. The phone number is 414-617-3441, and the website is aabnnetwork.org. Okay, mm -hmm. and I wish we had more time Maybe. because it's always a story in the headlines of some innocent mother who's uh, <laughs> dealing with drugs drama because she's breastfeeding in public. So that's another conversation yes. for another day. Thank yes, you for thank coming you. by. Dowry Blackwell is a co-founder and executive director of the African American Breastfeeding Network, Inc. And for more information on anything we've discussed today, again, go to aabnetwork.org or call 414-617-3441. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching. And I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues in Milwaukee. Have a great day.